Hey, what is going on, everyone? This is Tam from BotAcademy.com, and today we have the founder of BotList.co, Seth Louie. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Yep. Seth yep. Louie, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here, and hopefully we can get some, uh, get some knowledge dropped. Get some knowledge dropped. And for those who don't know who, what BotList is, can you give a quick description on what that site is? Um, when did you start it? Why did it start? Maybe a short backstory on, on where you came uh, about the, this project. Sure. So um, Botless is basically a, an app store for bots. It's the one all stop that you can go to and see bots from um, Amazon Echo to uh, Kick to Telegram to Messenger, pre uh, pretty much every major platform. We're going to add Cisco very soon. Um, so the, the problem right now that we were trying to solve is that um, bots basically can live cross platform because there's no like designated uh, first hand platform. So you can go and talk to the bot in Facebook and the same service also lives on kick or same service also lives in Slack. So we wanted to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. um, the bot list started, I think we just crossed our year mark in April. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're very excited about that. We launched, the day before F8 of last year. So we, we kind of uh, saw it coming. Um, we built this service, we built uh, the platform. And, and who, is, who is we? Is it, um, is yep. it sounds like a team? Yeah, so originally uh, it was Ben Tossel. So he was a community manager of Product Hunt. It was myself and then uh, Mubashar Iqbal, or uh, some people call him, know him, know him as Mubs. <laughs> um, yeah, so we we're all like huge product hunt nerds and we, uh, you know, came together with this idea. Um, Ben left like a month, month after just, um, just things got, you know, crazy at product hunt and they were, you know, everybody knows the story of product hunt being bought. So they were super busy and he couldn't uh, push the product forward. So it's just mubs and myself right now. Mm, got it. Well, cool. And how many bots are on this platform since, since this year has, um, you're passing the one year anniversary. Yeah, generally we, um, we don't really talk about the numbers because we, we look at our bots as quality more than quantity. So all the bots get submitted through our platform or go through some sort of like a QA process. So I personally have tested every bot on our platform, <laughs> which is super tedious. Um, every day six go out. Um, I think, you know, in the future, we're gonna have to expand this for scale. Uh, because of the bots and and whatever but um the the numbers of bots that are coming out uh and the numbers of platforms that are that are also um introducing chat messaging uh, yeah applications so that, that's insane and you don't have to share the exact numbers but i think when i was looking through the site earlier today i saw like i clicked on messenger for all the bots on facebook messenger mm -hmm. it was like 80 pages and each page had like 10 each so yeah some crazy amount of bots just on that category alone that you had to look at upon many others too <laughs> yeah yeah and it's the thing is like you know testing everything and making sure everything works properly there's a lot of bots that are also in our backlog and queue and also don't get um, submitted to the site. So I, you know, email them and I say, okay, well, you don't have a get started button. That's crucial for like a proper user experience, exactly. you know, for a bot. So a lot of those bots won't get approved um, because of the quality. Yeah. So what, tell me more about that. So what makes a, a, like a, a bot, if I submit a bot, what makes it good quality and like doesn't make the cut? I mean, the basic like things you can do is just make sure all the links work, make sure there's some sort of AI there for if you say hi, or if you don't have a get started button, there needs to, there's, needs to be some sort of quality there, um, first interaction. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I can judge a bot based on the first like 30 seconds that I'm interacting with the bot. And that's pretty much, you know, the time span I can say, okay, well, this is a quality bot or this is not a quality bot because you know links are broken and stuff but um, yeah. generally it's that first you know very split second of interaction mm -hmm. um, and that's i mean that's you know the name of the game right now is you know time uh, whatever people's attention spans are super small right now so mm -hmm. you just have to have that um have that first interaction really solid got it and i remember on on, on facebook you mentioned how um, the warrior chatbot was one of your favorites and I checked it out. Now it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Me, I would love to hear what did you learn? What did you love about that chatbot specifically that made you say, wow, that's, this is like number 
you know, the top 10 or whatever out of all the, the bots I've ever seen. I think the ROI or the, sorry, the, yeah, the ROI is really good on that bot. I mean, just uh, that, the return interaction is just like, Hey, uh, Stephen Curry just nailed this three and they, they'd like show a gif of that play. And then they would also tell you like the Warriors up by, you know, 20 in the third. And it's like, I'm not huge into sports, you know, but I, I love watching and I love com uh, competition. Um, so the playoffs are, are very, you know, crucial time of the year, I guess. So I don't have to go to ESPN to check the score or I don't like, I personally don't have cable. I don't have, you know, time for cable. Mm -hmm. So having that, you know, message pop up saying, Oh, um, the Warriors are up by 10 in the third and they show this like gif, like that kind of like interaction that return interaction, that broadcast is amazing for that bot. Mm. When you yeah. say return on investment, what do, you, what do you mean by that? Like the way I press a button and then it interacts with the bot, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, as a, as a user, um, me taking my time and, and like spending time with the bot and in, you know, engaging with it, um, just messaging it and, and hitting that UI, that custom UI or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and seeing like a photo with, uh, I think they did like, um, there was a photo of me, they took yep. my like messaging, pla yep. uh, messaging avatar, and then like put some like, awesome art around it that was, you know, uh, Golden State. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really cool. And they, they, they asked you to share that photo. It was a photo of your profile picture with like a like the recent one, they had a finger here and a ball yeah. right here and like fireworks in the back saying, share this win with your friends and the score. It was, it was really cool. I mean, you can't tell me that, you know, spending a lot of time and, and developing that bot, that, that little small detail mm. was amazing for that bot. And if people can take those small lessons they learn from the Golden State Warriors bot and apply it to their personal bots or whatever they're building, um, yeah you know, paying attention to that small detail that mm -hmm. makes it a lot more personal. And that's wow. what, uh, you know, people are, are missing the mark on with yeah. some of these bots. I would love to learn more about what kind of these small details are out there because many of the people watching this are marketers or founders who want to either like generate leads, close sales, just have better customer service, um, re-engage with the audience. Like they, they want to have those experiences, but they also want to have these business goals in mind. Have you seen any bots or any examples where, you know, there was a, a great messaging or marketing chat bot that combined great UI and UX together? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, it's really hard to pinpoint one just because we, I see so many a day. Um, and not only the ones that I, I approve and, you know, through our, our bot, um, but I also help, you know, people, Hello, you there? Message me, and I, I help. Uh, there's oh, sorry one. About, yep. Sorry about that. I think you cut off for that last. Two oh, sorry. Or so, what what did you say? You say you help people. Yeah. So uh, people actually direct message me, and I I do like a sometimes I'll do like a video screen share with them of me first time interactions with their bots, and I'll give them tips and stuff. Um, the latest one that I just did, uh, Welp. It, it's a basically it's a website building chat bot. Um, and they're doing some pretty cool stuff for people who might not know how to build, uh, websites. Um, and I, th and I think it's a bot that I would be excited for, uh, coming out. So that one was, was pretty interesting as for like personal businesses. I don't think a lot of people are hitting the mark right now. Um, so it's, it's really hard to determine, you know, like what people are, you know, what the pros and cons of some messaging bots are, are doing. Right sure. now. So are you kind of, what I'm hearing you say is like, it's kind of too early to tell like what is like best practice for a marketing bot and, um, and so on and so on. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? I, I just think that people are still um, trying to figure out, you know, how to market in a personal level um, to somebody in their direct uh, messenger. Uh, so yeah, it's not technically, I don't think everybody's hitting the, the, the mark as it is right now, but the evolution of the conversation is going so fast that what might be best practices today aren't best practices tomorrow. Mm, I see. Got it. I mean, you said you've seen so many different bots. 
is is there at least like one or two that you remember that is focused on like generating leads or like closing sales that maybe some of us can say oh um you know they're, they're doing a good job like we we seen um, like Derek Halpern um with his social triggers bot do um generate leads and stuff is, is there any other ones that you sp- uh, specifically remember um Scott um Oh my God, I can't remember his last name. I tried looking it up real quick. Is it Olford? Yeah, Scott Olford's doing some pretty pretty solid stuff. Um, you're doing some pretty solid stuff with what you are doing. Uh, I, some of the examples that you, uh, you had with your personal bot, they were doing some uh, pretty solid like lead stuff, which I which I really liked. Um, but you know, off the top of my head, it's really hard to to like. Got it. Figure out what's that golden nugget, nugget, sure. nugget, nugget of uh, um, chatbots. Like I said, though, if you study the Golden State Warriors bot, and um, there's a few other ones out there that are pretty solid, but um, yeah, let's talk about them. <laughs> putting me on the spot. Putting me on the spot. Like trying uh, to remember. <laughs> like I, I know, like Swelly, for example. Like is that how, is, how you pronounce it? Yeah, Swelly. Swelly, yep. Swelly is like has many different subscribers, but I personally don't even like their bot. I mean, I, I mean, like as a you, I'm not, I'm not talking about it probably. Like their bot yeah. is great, but um, there are some bots where like some people love, like Swelly, and there are some other bots where, like for myself, for myself, like oh, it's it's just a cool um, picture app thing. Um, yeah. Tell us more about some of the other bots that you've seen. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think the Christian Gray bot was pretty interesting. It was a, a nice like test. Um, to Josh uh, Bocanera and Christine Milian built that bot, but they they basically were just testing some theories out about like short uh, conversations um, and leading letting the user interact with the bot and kind of getting their own messaging. Um, basically, what I mean by that is um, there was no like direct uh, like goal set for that bot, right? Yeah. It was just here, test this bot out. People will message it. They have their own personal conversations with it, and they kind of allude to the, you know, like going down this one path for it. So um, that was an interesting, um, interesting bot. But that's that's really it. Nice. Well, I, I mean, you've seen so many different bots. Are there like some general takeaways where you can say like, oh, these bots do really well at, you know, um, having a great menu or like having a great you know, like, like you mentioned earlier, like conversational UI, are there kind of like general good practices that the bots you've seen that are like, wow, pretty good? Yeah, so I think uh, people miss the mark on, um, so if you have a conversation and you're, you're uh, having a conversation with a bot and there's no like type typing, so that, that um, delay like typing animation delay, yeah. I think when you throw a bunch of information at somebody at once, if it's like message, 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 and they're like, you know, three, three uh, line breaks long or whatever, like that's way too much messaging for somebody. Um, I don't even like it when like my mom sends me an email because it's like literally like, <laughs> literally like, <laughs> yeah, it's an essay long and I'm like, I don't have time for this. I'm just going to call her. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, I mean, I think short messaging, I think um, showing that animation that somebody's actually taking the time to write uh, because, you know, in that sense, you'll wait as a user. If you see that, you'll wait and you'll, you're anticipating a message. So you're kind of like, um, you know, you're just kind of like build, that build up is coming a little bit. You're like, oh, what are they going to say? You know? Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, as a bot maker, you just have to really like focus on, you know, those little core details of like, think about what night annoys you when you talk to people and don't put that into the bot, right? Don't send yeah. them a long paragraph of, of copy. Just give them little nuggets of information, mm-hmm. string them along the way and make it so whenever they come back to the bot, they never have to re-engage with that welcome message or, or that information. Mm-hmm. I feel like chatbots are just another advanced, le- advanced strategy of learning how to do user research. So it's less about the, ch- like the chatbot specific- specifically, more about like understanding the user, understanding the platform that you're communicating with and making, a, it sounds like it's making, um, like learning, th- through those information before you even touch a chatbot platform builder or whatever it is. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. And I think another thing too is like when you, when you're engaging with the user, if you're not tracking those terms or tracking those user attributes. So for example, in chat fuel, they have, you can track like, uh, Tam, do you like apples, oranges, you know, and you can track what that like, say it's fruit or whatever, and you write oranges. Well, now I can retarget you in a broadcast with all this information that I'm tracking mm -hmm. on a more personal level. And a lot of people aren't doing that right now. They're not taking that information that you're engaging with and they're not, you know, re-engaging in a broadcast once a week saying, you know, hey, you, you said uh, <laughs> you love oranges, but there's a sale down the road of some more, you know, this is a terrible, no, you know, of course, example, yeah. But, <laughs> the, you see what I mean? Like, yeah, the example we, oh, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, I was just going to say the, the broadcast and making them a little bit more personal. Uh, I think that's really crucial. And uh, it makes, it makes the value of the, the chat bot even higher when you're uh, connecting on a more personal level. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was just going to comment, like, this is an ideal opportunity to segment your customers through the chat bot. And I'm wondering like, why don't people take advantage of this? Is it because like it's too much work or is it, they just don't know how, like there's no like how to tutorial, how to do it? Yeah, I would say both. <laughs> I would say both. The, the thing is like, there's so many people out there that, you know, if, if you have a newsletter of like 3000 people, whatever, yeah, they just send out, just send out the newsletter. Everybody's going to get it, but it's not like you'll see open rates. They're like 15% or 20% and click through is like, five so yeah with the chat bot you know you're getting those 80 percent open rates or or higher and then you're getting those 60 percent click-through rates or higher and you know you kind of have to like the, the the cream will rise you know to the top if it's a it's a better chat bot and if it's more targeted and and more segmented yeah i mean i love this i love the segmenting part i love the um, delays part and I know I am putting you on the spot again but like do, do you have more like if you just spit out like 10 more of these like holy <laughs> crap this, this would be this interview would be so gold um, yeah maybe I should start recording myself when I start um, <laughs> testing all these bots out yeah why don't um, you publish those shoot those would be pretty cool to watch I, I definitely could um, and maybe that's something I'll do um, but but yeah I'm trying to think of like some other <laughs> things here to give you guys but um, I, I well, go ahead. While, while you're thinking about that, like I talked to uh, Anastasia from um, the person who created the Warriors chatbot, and one thing I really liked about the Warriors chatbot was they had everything within Messenger. So on the main menu, you can click like shop for gear or find tickets. You can literally shop for men's and stuff, with, or men's clothing or shoes or whatever within the app, and yeah. and then you won't even take you outside. I think that's like a really cool thing that they purposely did that instead of taking the easy way out. And just putting like an external link and going yeah, to it. That's a great point. Um, don't don't kick people out to other other uh, you know web pages or whatever. It, it's a terrible experience because the thing is you're you're driving them away from Messenger, and then you know they're they're not going to come back and say oh maybe I'll you know check that out or whatever. But um, you know users are getting so many notifications at one time with like social media being out there, right? I can't tell you, I wake up, my phone has, you know, 40 to 60, you know, missed notifications. And it's like, you know, that's, that's the life we're living in. And if you kick somebody out to another, uh, you know, a web page, a lot of times they're going to get distracted. So you can't like, you know, figure out where, where they left off in that process. Mm. But if they leave your messaging bot and they clicked on, you know, shop, at least you can rebroadcast to them and say, okay, this, this user uh, dropped off at the shop um, spot. So maybe we can hit them up and say, Hey, we noticed, you know, you didn't buy anything. Um, but you know, this is on sale and maybe, do you like this? Yes or no. If they say no, then you know exactly like now you can segment that person and say, okay, never send them uh, this red uh, shirt because they hate it. <laughs> So now send them something else, right? Yeah. It's so easy. It's almost so easy. <laughs> wow. I mean, all these little things, they, they all add up to a really big, the big user experience. I mean, I guess like marketers are wondering like, okay, I, I want to do message chat bots, but I don't want to let go of my email list. And some of them have even asked me like, hey, should I ask for their email within Facebook Messenger so that I can 
so you have i see you shaking your head no <laughs> no I don't, I don't think so um you know it's like it's like I, i'm trying to <laughs> find a metaphor here but it, it's maybe maybe like through the process of like if you're selling something and they buy it and they like it maybe you can re like maybe you could broadcast out to them and say hey we noticed that you bought this or you've been buying stuff from us we want to send you a special deal and send us your email and we'll you know maybe we'll you know if you want you can but the thing is you're already you're already selling to those users you're already you know why do you need to boost your your email list at that point Got Maybe it. you can say, you know, check out our website. And if on your website you have subscribed to our newsletter or something there, like that's valuable. Mm. But why do you, why do you have to like pull them out and, you know, have them sign up to a newsletter? Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to get more engagement out of them in a newsletter. You're going to get more engagement out of them in messenger. Mm. Got it. And I know many doesn't have this integration yet, or it seems like it's not yet. But does Chatfield have a thing where, like, if you send a broadcast to 5,000 people and to, to a Shopify link, uh, you can track how many people actually bought through that link? And you could, broad, like, say 100 people bought from that link, you could broadcast again to 100 people saying, here's an upsell or whatever it is. Is that possible with Chatfield? Um, I, haven't, I haven't done that on my own. Like, I haven't really researched that. So I can't give you a, de a de definite answer. I can tell you that chat fuel is coming out with a, a big update very soon. Um, and Ooh. I think, it, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, pretty substantial to the point where, I mean, they're they're they have so many bots on their platform now as it is. Yeah. Uh, so I can't see them like not, you know, having some real golden nuggets in that update. Um, I think I know what it's going to, gonna be too i think i think they're gonna introduce like the facebook comments uh thing that manny chat has yeah because that's that's a crucial feature um, yeah and for those who are wondering what that is it's when you can make someone you can anyone who comments on a facebook post can be automatic automatically subscribed to your messenger bot so yep. more leads yeah yeah that drives the leads right there but I mean, the thing is with, with broadcast, I, I really like Chatfield's broadcast system um, just for like, you can, you can put, throw them into like a segment, you know, which is kind of nice. Um, so you, if you broadcast something out um, and you have them have the user go down like a path uh, and they, they go down to the path of purchasing something yeah. um, or if they, if they don't want to at that time, you can always hit them, re-engage them in the, in that segment. So that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah. Got it. Well, awesome. This has been super helpful, super useful. Is there any last word that you want to say to the audience or any last party advice before we end the call today? Submit your bots to bot list. <laughs> <laughs> submit your, and where, where, what website, what, do you, what is the URL to submit to bot list? Yep. It's botlist.co. So we have everything there uh, you need to submit and, and, you know, grow your bots. So it's the best place to do that. Awesome. All right, Seth, thank you so much for this. Thanks for having me.